Good morning, family and friends. Pastor, Pastor, I'm Glenna Whitaker. I'm her spiritual daughter, mother. I love you. Uh, I met Mother April 28th in 1998, and um, it was an instant bond because. Once I said, we they ushered us, my husband and I up, and we sat beside her, and we ne never left, and she never left my side until now. But I know God calls her home for a reason, because in 100 years she had to be tired. But I'm going to miss her, and I think I want to publicly thank the pastor and his wife. Because they stepped in at the time that we needed them because I work and I couldn't doubt people wasn't doing it. But thank you, thank you for stepping in and taking care of my mother. She was, my, she was a spiritual mother, but she was my mother. And I love her dearly. I'm going to miss her. But I know she's in a better place. I love you, mother. Uh, she, 
she nurtured us, she supported us, mm -hmm. she, uh, she raised us as though she were our mother, and she loved us, and we loved her. Uh, Lolly was, uh, uh, Sister Whitaker spoke to her, uh, spoke of her as her spiritual mother. I feel the same way, and I guess that means, Sister Whitaker, that you and I are related to each other. <laughs> Um, and Lolly's family and mine became connected in, in unusual and unexpected ways. I mean, we celebrated uh, birthdays and graduations and weddings together. And, uh, and we also supported each other through some sickness and difficult family times. Uh, Lolly and my father uh, became especially close. Uh, they were both almost exactly the same age, both born in 1917, and although they were very different people, there was a bond between them. And uh, when my parents uh, were divorced, Lolly was there for my father. I mean, she stuck by him and she really supported him through that whole, um, that whole chapter. And when Lolly was faced with the challenge of having to raise Jackie, her, her granddaughter, on her own, mm -hmm. my father was there for her, and he yes. supported her. Yes. And so there was a kind of a mutual um, uh, support system there that was very, very special. Uh, Lolly, as we all know, was a very strong person. She oh. had very strong opinions, yeah. and she she did not mince words. And, <laughs> and sometimes it got her into trouble, but she also supported people who acted the same way. And I just want to share one memory that I have of when I was a, I don't know, a little kid, and I had never, um, we drove Lolly home. She was living somewhere in this neighborhood, and this was, so this was the early 1960s, and Harlem at that time was very different than the Harlem of today. And it was also, um, it was the most densely populated uh, urban community in the world, I believe, because black people were not allowed to buy or live in other neighborhoods. They were bought. So everybody was packed into Harlem and a couple of other neighborhoods. And I remember, I had never seen, been to, to Lolly's neighborhood before. And uh, so we drove up, and it was a summer's day, and we didn't usually drive her home, but for some reason we did. The whole family was in the car, and she was with us, and I looked out the window, and all I saw was people everywhere come hanging out the window, hanging on stoops, and talking, and everything. And Lolly waved to some people, and started talking, and everything. And I was like, Oh my God! <laughs> and she said, and she turned to me and she said, "It's okay, you know." And that, and that's, and that's all I needed. And she knew what I needed at that point, and I so appreciated her making that gesture. So, just uh, in closing, uh, I just want to tell you one more story. So, uh, when my daughters, they're both in their in their late 20s now, when they were in their teens, we visited Lolly in her apartment. And she told us a story that has stuck with them and has stuck with me ever since. She was in the hospital, and I think it must have been when she had knee surgery. And she had a near-death experience. Yes. And she told us about how she saw this pure white light and she started moving towards the light, and she felt very peaceful. And I talked to my daughter last night, and she remembers there was something about angels in there, too. And all of a sudden, something pulled her back. And she woke up, and there were the doctors and nurses and the other hospital people looking down at her. And she had, you know, she was on her way, and then she, something turned her around. Yes. So, last Thursday, Molly completed that journey. And I think of her now 
surrounded by that light and in peace. And I will remember her for the rest of my days. Yeah.